Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Yes, I'm repping the new hat. I'm back in Houston in my room. My new jacket. I might pop up a picture of the back of this jacket is the best part of it. And really the reason I bought it. So maybe I'll show you that. But uh, yeah, some of my friends called, wanted to go out tonight. So I decided to show them my newest outfit. Or at least part of what I bought. But getting back to the audio file side, that's been just as crazy as my outfits. I've been seeing, as you probably been following, the hardcore audiophile up in Northern California. I still haven't gotten to his best room yet, which is the dedicated room with Estalon uh, Extremes and the best Aerie Surratt gear that they offer, uh, as well as his grounding boxes. And I've also been testing, the, as well as some other stuff from the Long Beach show, like things that are disappointing. I usually put that in the membership section. Uh, and if you do want to support the channel, let me tell you about the membership section real quick. Uh, it's a section where I upload videos that I don't put public uh, on things, maybe like cables. I don't like to call out people. I don't like to get involved with the, all the drama that's always on YouTube. But for members, you know, I'll give more, I can be more frank and share some things that people would probably find valuable uh, that like my main channel. But the biggest benefit, though, I think for members if you want to become a paying member on the youtube site is i offer a whatsapp group that all the members can join as well as i've got people like steve mccormick the guys from 3ma and it's a great resource for not only just having fun talking you have access to me daily almost immediately via the te text group but you also can do uh talk about things that you're looking to buy and leverage all the experience of other members and myself and the people that I've assembled on that group that can help you and so that's part of the fun and it, it's a lot of fun for me as, as well uh, interacting with you on a direct basis so if you're interested in that uh, that's an option it usually shows up after you subscribe to the channel there'll be a pop-up or certain browsers block that join button I don't know what the deal is with YouTube but if you have any problems just email me uh, but getting back to the theme of today, I wanted to leapfrog all these videos I have in the hopper, including that million dollar system. That's going to be a multi-part video because the equipment is incredible behind just that million dollar speaker. The gentleman who uh, owns that system and another system, a baby system, almost identical to that one, but the next tier down in both speaker and electronics, I'm going to feature that. But you've got to learn about the electronics and the source equipment behind this. It's a, this is an all-out assault at every single level. And Rick Brown and Steve McCormick were my tour guides in, uh, during this process. And they have been instrumental in putting this system together. Rick Brown with Hi-Fi One. Steve McCormick, as you know, does my amps. SMC Audio, legendary with McCormick. Audio that he sold to Conrad Johnson. He was involved with direct-to-disc. Uh, mastering so when I was trying to decide whether to buy a turntable or not uh, I'm lucky to have quite a bit of people I can leverage and the best part of being uh, one of the best attributes to have as an audiophile is to know what you don't know and so as you noticed in the um, coverage of Long Beach Audio Show I was tempted to buy a triangle art turntable and I haven't been into turntables for a while, so I knew I needed to leverage other people's opinion. Charles Kiermus, Eric Watson, JR from Wally Tools, Steve McCormick, and some of those people were able to leverage their roller deck. You can imagine who they texted in the vinyl realm to also get two cents in. So I was very thankful for their input. And really what it boiled down to, with uh, to get one topic out of the way, that the purpose of this video is, did I buy a turntable? I didn't buy it at the show. It really didn't have too much to do with any negative feedback on Triangle Art. It's a beautiful turntable. The fit and finish is immaculate. There are always different opinions on how people put together a turntable and whatnot. And we didn't get a chance to do some thorough testing of the platter. The things that JR and other people have showed me to how to test a turntable. Um, you know, in the show conditions, it's not something that I would expect the distributor to just let me play with it. It's not really a sales environment. So uh, I tabled buying it at the time, but it really boiled down to, as I thought about it more, buying a turntable for me right now is probably should be secondary. I don't have, for practical reasons, I don't have any room to put it here that isn't going to be problematic. 
And a turntable as beautiful as that triangle art needs to be seen, I think, as well as heard. So I'd have to put in my main room. And to date, I just have still too many young kids coming over to my house to be your relatives. And I don't have a way to insulate a turntable from arms and young ones playing with it. They play with my Macintosh. One reason I bought Macintosh for my wisdoms in there is because it's kind of bulletproof. They can turn the dob knobs and even short the amp accidentally and it probably won't do anything. Luckily, I haven't had to deal with it. But yeah, that room and stuff is just not conducive to a turntable right now. So for practical purposes, I'm going to table that. But let me tell you, I'm more and more convinced that I am going to go back to a turntable at some point piggybacking on what I heard with this gentleman with a million dollar speakers and Rick Brown's place where he's got the Dolman turd table. Uh, and we played a lacquer, which is a first exposure to me to have these rare lacquers. Again, lacquers don't last all that long. You don't play them that much. And I was very privileged that Rick played one for me. And this was just phenomenal. And I, so I think what is gonna get me back in the vinyl is just for niche purposes. For certain lacquers, it's probably what I'm going to build my inventory for. It's going to be for show number one, for certain lacquers playing, and then certain other. I'll build a small inventory of vinyl to play. I just don't think I'm going to go head first with thousands and thousands of records and kind of reproduce a catalog like a hardcore vinylist. But that's probably where I'm leaning towards doing. Lacquers, very niche things that I can play for while, you know, just like you acquire rare wine and rare liquors and other things that you you use on selective basis. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'll walk you through the process that I go through. I've gotten a lot of good insights and help in this thing, in this process to when I do decide to do it, what I'm going to do. So I'll share that with you as well, like I'm doing with this whole channel. I'm just narrating my audio file journey, not taking, not taking review stuff, not doing the can reviews or forcing material. This is just stuff I'm doing naturally, not doing it for the channel alone. So in terms of what else is coming up is the Million Dollar System, Rick Brown System, which the T-Doll Akira's amazing. You're going to love hearing that. All the details behind the burning amp and Steve McCormick's involvement, Ypsilon's involvement, hearing from that gentleman that owns the Million Dollar System. And again, still stuff from the Northern Cal visit. But I wanted to leapfrog all of that because gear is eye candy and great, but that's only half of the hobby. Music is another half. So I don't want to spend, I've been spending a lot of time on gear. Let's focus on some great music that I heard at the show that I can share with you. I'm going to put it all in the description. Usually I'll play it on my GR Research and Extremes and do a video, but I've given you enough music clips and I don't really have time to do all that. So what, it, what it will follow in this video in the description are all the music clips that I found cool at the show, uh, the Long Beach show this year. And really there was one track that I added to my playlist, reference playlist. A lot of them that you're gonna see in this I already had, like the Greg Browns, the Take Five, all that stuff. But I'm gonna put it in there in case you're new and don't go to a lot of these shows and hear these songs. These are all ones that I think you'll enjoy, both from a performance and an audiophile quality perspective. But there was one song I hadn't heard before, and it was the second song in the Margulis Rido Room. And what was ironic, I was about to fly back, and Steve McCormick called me. He said, hey, there was a song in one of your videos. I can't remember which one, but did you bring any music? I wanna, I'm going to get that album. And I said, is it the second song in the Margulis Rido Room? He didn't know offhand. But sure enough, when he played me a sample streaming, I said, I think that is. And so I went back to my video. It, we were on the same wavelength. That second track on the Margulis Rido Room demo, it's a jazz variant uh, ozone percussion group. It's really good. And I played it at 3MA, did a little upload today on the N-Extremes. The guy at M uh, 3MA added to their playlist. So that's one you're really going to probably enjoy. Test a lot of things, and it's a fun track. Uh, all the other ones, I think, are fairly common if you're a you know, sophisticated, uh, common uh, attender of shows. You probably hear these. But I put in some of my favorites, like Greg Brown. And in some cases, I'll throw in a few extra tracks that I didn't hear at the show, but other ones by Greg Brown or something else that 
may be on the same flavor so that you'll get a nice little playlist um, in the description that you can try on your system at some point i'll play them on these so you can benchmark it but i got just so much backlog material i don't know what, how i'm gonna get all this out uh, i'm going to july 4th i'm going to vegas to uh, take a look at 3ma's new store that's coming there just so much stuff on the agenda so hope you've been enjoying sign up subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you back here soon